hearing more. Thank you, Thank Mr. You, Chairman. Man. Thank you very much, Senator Jean. Senator Cotton, please. General, congratulations on your nomination. Thank you for your you, career of distinguished service. Uh, thanks to your wife, Christina, uh, for supporting you and no doubt supporting the families of the troops you've led over the years. And thanks to your family for their service. The defense of this nation is often a family affair. Um, I want to discuss uh, the request by Finland and Sweden to join NATO. Um, that's a political decision that will be made by the president and, and this Senate, as well as 29 other NATO members. But NATO is foremost a military alliance, uh, so I would like to get your professional military judgment uh, on the implications of adding Sweden and Finland to NATO. Um, what do you think it will do uh, to bolster our common defense to have Sweden and Finland uh, as members of NATO? Senator, I look forward to the accession of Finland and Sweden to the alliance from a military perspective. Each of those militaries brings quite a bit of capability and capacity to the alliance from day one. Um, for example, Finland has a large army, well-equipped, very well-trained, very quickly expansible, exercised very frequently, and absolutely expert in defending the borderline that it has had with Russia for, for these past decades an expertise that they demonstrated in 1939 and has built on ever since. Um, Finland, in addition to its big army, has F-15 fighter jets and has just decided to buy 64 F-35. So they will, they will arrive bringing capacity and capability to the alliance. Sweden's the same thing, a smaller army, but a very capable army and an army that's growing. Uh, my colleague, Carl Engelbrechtston, has a 200% increase in his acquisition budget over a five-year period. They've recently bought Patriots and are contemplating buying some other, other equipment. We work with them very closely. Critically, they bring a Navy in the Baltic Sea, uh, which will be of enormous military significance to the Alliance. And then if we look geographically with the accession of those two countries, the entire Black Sea, with the exception of a couple of few kilometers um, will be a uh, uh, coastline of NATO nations, which will create a very different geometry in the area, sir. I think you mean the, the, the entire Baltic Sea, right? I, I'm sorry. I, yeah. I, 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 of course, yeah, speak, Can you speak specifically about what it means for the, uh, Russia's Baltic fleet to now have the northern shores of the Gulf of Finland, a part of NATO, um, since the southern shore of Estonia already is, and then also what it means to have Gotland a large Swedish island in the middle of the Baltic fleet. What, what does that mean to, the, to Russia's Baltic fleet in their defense planning? Well, sir, in the most generic sense, it provides a bunch of different dilemmas, uh, almost geometric dilemmas that, that Russia does not have right now as they sail forth from St. Petersburg and Kaliningrad. Um, so it will be advantageous. You mentioned uh, one other key feature of geography, which is the 800-mile border that Finland has with Russia. Some might say, gosh, this exposes NATO to a lot more risk because you have this large border. Uh, it sounds like your perspective is that rather than exposing NATO to risk, it exposes Russia to greater risk and complicates Russia's defense planning. Could you elaborate? I do think that, Senator. I think that for a couple of reasons. First of all, Russia has not historically uh, put too many ground forces on that border. It's been an economy of force theater for them because they thought they had a, a relationship with Finland that allowed them to do that. This allowed Russia to concentrate ground forces in other places. That, that possibility will now go away for Russia. Um, in addition to that, the Finns, um, as I mentioned a moment ago, are absolutely expert in defending that border. I've personally gone on a snowmobile with the chief of the, the border guards and with the chief of the Finnish army down half the length of that border, and I was very impressed at their ability to defend it. Do you think the Russian general staff uh, is fairly well versed in the history of the Winter War, which you alluded to, 1939-1940? Sir, I know they are. That Winter War um, is studied not just by Western armies as a model of how to beat a larger force, but it's studied by the Russians as well as um, an important lesson to learn from their past. And it sounds like you think that even 80 years on that uh, those Russian general staff might not want to put their hand on that hot stove again after they did it in the Winter War. I would hate to put myself inside their head, Senator, but I wouldn't want to do it if I were them. All right. One final question. There was a report uh, a couple days ago in the Wall Street Journal 
that the administration is considering sending special operation forces to guard the embassy in Kiev. Uh, can you comment on that report? Sir, I can't, can't comment publicly on it, um, but um, we, we currently do not have any Marine security detachment um, with the embassy in Kiev. Um, and, um, and with regard to special forces, I think we'd have to talk about it in a, okay. in a separate. I, I, I was going to, you, you answered my next question, which was going to be, do we have Marines at that embassy, which we have in pretty much every other embassy all around the world. In fact, I just checked this morning. We do in fact have Marines in Moscow, yet we don't have Marines guarding our embassy in Kiev. Is, is their job all around the world? And, and I think that's because the president came out last year and publicly stated that he would never put troops into Ukraine. And now the administration is running around like a cat chasing its tail, trying to figure out how to let these Marines do their job at that embassy, just like they're doing in Moscow, just like they're doing at five diplomatic facilities in China. I think we should just let the Marines go do their job at the embassy. Uh, this is another instance in which I'm afraid the president is self-deterring in a public fashion, which is sending the wrong signal to Vladimir Putin. So you don't have to respond, but you can take it under advisement. I think the Marines should be standing guard at the Kiev embassy uh, whenever you get confirmed. Thank, Thank you. you, Senator. Thank you, Senator Cotton. Senator